And thank you so much for joining us here on Idaho Today. October is Safe Sleep Awareness Month. It's a month that is dedicated to promoting healthy sleeping habits for newborns and also to raise awareness about sleep-related risks to infants. Joining us now is Dr. Harvey Karp. You may know him from the hit parenting book, Happiest Baby on the Block, and very admittedly so, Dr. Karp. That is a book I used with both of my children, so I was super excited to find out what we got to talk to you today. So thank well, you so much for joining us. Thank yes. you so much. All right, so, I mean, SIDS, parents are very familiar with this, but again, give us a little reminder, what is SIDS, what does it stand for, and help us fully understand the potential dangers surrounding this. Sure, you bet. So SIDS is, is an acronym, it stands for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. So it's when babies die in their sleep. Um, and there's good news, bad news, good news about that. The good news in the beginning is that 30 years ago, we doctors figured out that babies shouldn't sleep on the stomach. They're safest to sleep on the back by themselves in a bassinet or a crib. That dramatically reduced the risk of death for babies. Then other good news, breastfeeding, sharing the room, but not bed sharing. Bed sharing creates a higher risk for babies. No smoking cigarettes. Um, 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 no using pillows or soft bedding in the baby's beds. All of those things are important steps that you can do to reduce your own child's risk. All of that's the good news. The bad news is that over the last 20 years, we actually haven't made much progress in reducing mm. SIDS. It's 3,500 babies every year. And I used to say in my lectures that if another country killed 3,500 of our babies, we would go to war. Why aren't we doing more to educate people to stop these risks? And the good news is that there is, um, through my team, actually, we created a new type of a baby bed called SNU that rocks and shushes babies, so they sleep an extra hour or two, but it secures babies on the back uh, has a seatbelt in it, so they cannot roll to an unsafe position. And that makes it the very first FDA de novo authorized baby bed to keep babies safely on the back all night long. Oh my goodness, okay. So then some parents then don't have to, you know, have that anxious feeling when you're trying to get your very important needed rest. Uh, they can sleep surely, you know, confidently knowing that their baby is going to be in a safe position. And I do have to admit though, cause you went back to uh, pointing out like the soft bedding and the pillows. Um, I, I was so excited to have baby bumpers in my baby's crib because it was just mm -hmm. such a beautiful touch in the nursery. But again, mm -hmm. that's something that is not advised to this day, correct? You're so right. A beautiful pillow with little frilly edges. I mean, it's great for Instagram. Yes. Not so good for your baby. So yeah. moving away in a, in a flat, uh, empty bed is the best. You know, we secure babies in car seats. Yes. You wouldn't drive two minutes without putting your baby in a car seat. But the number one place babies die actually is in their beds. Mm. And so we put them there for 12, 14 hours without securing them at all. I think five years from now, we're going to look back on this and go, what were we thinking? Why didn't we secure babies? Okay. And then you also had mentioned, though, too, about um, having the baby in the same room as you for the early portion of their life. How long do you suggest a parent do that before they transition them to another room? Yeah, the Academy, uh, American Academy of Pediatrics recommends six months okay. as a pretty good period. And that gets you through. So 90% of these deaths mm -hmm. occur in the first six months of life. So once you're past six months, you're much in a much safer zone. Okay, that's great to know. And then again, bed sharing. I think a lot of parents uh, just really love the idea of being close, especially nursing moms, when they have that opportunity to have the baby right by them. There's just that false security of, oh, my child is safe. But again, you're advising that that's not necessarily the safest situation for your infant. Can yeah. you explain that further? I love bed sharing. As a pediatrician, I love bed sharing once kids are big and strong and able to take care of themselves. So over 9 to 12 months of age. But in those first six months, you're deep asleep. I mean, obviously, if you're using drugs or alcohol, that's not a good thing. Uh -huh. But when you're so tired, you're the equivalent of drunk. That's why people get into car accidents. And so you really don't want to put the child at risk that you might turn and pull the covers over your baby's face. It's really not a risk you want to take. About 60, 70 percent of all the deaths occur in a bed a situation or on a sofa. Um, that's why with SNU, our goal with SNU is that everyone gets it for free. 
thousands of people get it for free through their employers, hospitals, uh, manufacturers, et cetera. And anyone can rent it for $5 a day and it ships for free. So our goal is to dramatically improve the access that people have to a bed that not only secures babies, but increases their sleep so you're less tempted to, to do something that's unsafe. And Dr. Carp, where do people go to learn more? Happiestbaby.com is our website. There's thousands of article, free articles, free information for anyone who wants to come and get it and, and information about Happiest Baby and Snoo. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate your time and all your expert advice. Thank you, Melissa. All right, take care. And everyone stick around because Medicare open enrollment is coming up fast. We'll be telling you how you can make this process a little bit smoother. More expert advice on the way. We'll be right back.